Hello wonderful people, my name is Carol Vey and welcome back to my channel. This past week I received an email from a viewer, Kathy or Kitty T, who shared that the Lord had placed a burden on her heart for unsaved moms, and I'll add parents here, who would be losing their children in the rapture of the church. She said, I just think, feel that there may be many who are angry at God for taking them if they see beyond the deception of the aliens or what we believe will be the excuse for the rapture, maybe that we were abducted, and think they may not understand that it is Jesus' loving act of kindness to spare the children the tribulation. I wish so much for them to hear this message, even if they think it's crazy now. I just want them to remember it and have it bring some small measure of comfort to them later on after it happens. I type this with tears running down. I feel so deeply for them. And I was praying about this email and thought I had never done a video specifically about children being raptured. Will children be raptured? Even children with unsaved parents? If so, we know that so many more, even Besides the moms and dads, there will be grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, so many who love these children, and then to see them suddenly disappear will bring so much anguish to their hearts. So many will be devastated when multitudes of children suddenly disappear. And if you are the parent of a young child who does not know the Lord, I pray that you watch this video to the end to find out how you can go with your child when this event happens. Of course, we know that all people are born with a sin nature, including children, and yet children are innocent. They have a pure heart. They are too young to understand the good news of the gospel that God came to make a way for us. And the Lord knows that. He is always good to all. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. His love for us goes all the way back to the point of conception. He already knows and loves my grandson that is due to be born right around Christmas of this year. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! So even though mankind is born with a sin nature, the Lord refers to children as innocent. And I knew there were a couple of verses in the book of Jeremiah stating this. One of them is from chapter 19. Because they have forsaken me and made this an alien place, because they have burned incense into other gods whom neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah have known, and have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. And I looked at this verse in all English translations to make sure that he was speaking about about children when referring to innocence. And there were only a few that used the word children in this verse, but the most obvious one was the CEV translation, which says, the people of Judah stopped worshiping me and made this valley into a place of worship for Baal and other gods that have never helped them or their ancestors or their kings. And they have committed murder here, burning their young, innocent children as sacrifices to Baal. I have never even thought of telling you to do that. It seems like child sacrifice has gone back to the beginning of time, and yet the world today will tell us that, that unborn babies aren't even real human beings yet. They will consider it human rights to protect the parents doing this 
and yet there is no human rights shown to this unborn child. And yet the Lord says he formed them in their mother's womb. The Lord considers children innocent. They are not held responsible for their sins under a certain age or age of accountability. They are not held responsible for fully understanding the gospel. And I've heard of many children who were saved at a really young age and praise God, all glory to God. But I believe he considers all children innocent, pure of heart. I've been teaching Sunday school to first or third graders for 31 years now. And if I ever ask who believes in Jesus, every child will raise their hands. And yet I've been doing this long enough to see some of those children grow up only to admit that they never believed that, that he was real. They never believed that he came to die for their sins. And this is an example of how the innocence of children causes them to want to please their teachers and parents and elders. Three out of the four gospels share an interaction between Jesus and a group of children that were brought to him. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. I love to share this story with children because just imagine Jesus own disciples saying, hey, hey kids, leave Jesus alone. He's too busy dealing with the grownups right now. And yet Jesus rebukes his own disciples and says, no, let them come to me. This shows the importance that Jesus puts on children. I was one of five kids growing up and I remember my parents having this group of friends that would come together and play bridge at our house. And we were always expected to go downstairs and leave the adults alone. And I just wanted to be up there with the grown-ups so bad to feel like maybe I was important and maybe they would want a, a visit with me being a child. And to think Jesus had his priorities so straight when he said, let the children come to me. In the past, I always thought that when Jesus said, for of such, meaning children, is the kingdom of heaven, that this meant that all who were saved had this childlike faith. And in Matthew chapter 18, we read, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them and said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So we should be like those children in heaven, raising our hands, really believing that Jesus is Lord, believing it so deep down in our hearts that we never say that we were not saved back then when we rose our hand. I even think of his interaction with Thomas when Thomas didn't believe that they had seen the resurrected Lord. And after the Lord appeared to Thomas, he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Let us be like children. Let us be like those who have not seen and yet believe that Jesus is Lord. In the same chapter of Matthew, we read, even so it is not the will of your father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So is heaven full of people who have humbled themselves like children or is heaven really literally full of young children and babies? going all the way back to conception, those who were tragically miscarried, those who were born and then died just a little while later, like my first son, Spencer, those who were aborted by their mother and or father, those who lost their lives as young children, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And I believe it is full of both groups, many, many, many babies and children, as well as grown-ups who humbled themselves as children. So this loss of our first child, Spencer, was such a devastating loss. And this was before I was saved. And to make it even worse, there was a Christian 
who was trying to lead me to the Lord at the time, who told me that our baby had been taken to hell by Satan. And I believe this is a lie from the pit of hell. But it was this event that began my search for the Lord. And now, praise God, we will be reunited with Spencer. And one story that I believe proves that this is true is the story of when King David lost his baby that he had with Bathsheba. And we all know this story about David committing adultery with Bathsheba. She conceives a baby, and then Uriah, her husband, is ultimately killed out on the battlefield, and how David ended up marrying Bathsheba. But the Lord struck the child with illness, and David pleaded with God, fasted, and after seven days, the child died. When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went to his own house. And when he requested, they set food before him and he ate. Then his servant said to him, what is it that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. And he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. David knew the Lord. He was a man after God's own heart. He knew that his child was in heaven and that he would be reunited with him. Many might wonder how David could end up going to heaven after what he had done. I know I was surprised at even how Lot was considered a righteous man. And yet it's always God who gives us his righteousness when we have faith that he is Lord. In Acts chapter 13, Paul is giving a type of history lesson when he says, and when he had removed him, meaning God removing King Saul from power, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. The Lord's will was that David believed in the Lord and sought after the Lord. David believed his strength came from God. He believed his son was in heaven and he believed that he would be going there as well. I love what Charles Spurgeon said. I rejoice to know the souls of all infants as soon as they die, speed their way to paradise. Think what a multitude there is of them. So I believe that we have proved that young children will go to heaven after they die or if they are alive at the time of the rapture, they will be taken as well. So at what age is it that they are held accountable, that they can now willingly sin, that they are held accountable for their actions? And when I Googled this question, I was told that the Bible doesn't clearly give an answer on this. And yet I remember our brother Pete Garcia mentioning that when the children of Israel were out in the wilderness and spies were sent into Canaan, they returned and only Caleb and Joshua had a good report and felt like they should go into the promised land. But the 10 other men claimed that they would be devoured by the giants that they saw there. And of course, the children of Israel started complaining again, saying that Moses should have never led them out of Egypt in the first place. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above, 
except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. You shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in, but your little ones whom you said would be victims, I will bring in and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. In addition to this passage, I saw many other scriptures saying that 20 years and older would go to war and those 20 years or older would make sacrifices. And yet this seems so old to some of us. God knows when each soul is accountable. Some say that God knows when real rejection has taken place and when enmity with God is conscious and willful. So it could be that God knows when one is without excuse. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Even atheists, who may have believed at some point in their life that we evolved from some single cell organism must be learning now that this isn't possible, that there is no evidence ever found that shows a cell improving on itself. I even believe I saw some video with Stephen Hawking admitting that evolution couldn't be real the way we were taught that maybe extraterrestrials who were much more advanced than us must have brought us to earth. And when Christians and children suddenly disappear, the world might turn to this type of belief before ever admitting that it could have been God taking us the way his inerrant word said he would. So if you are a parent or someone with young children in your life, and you don't believe that Jesus is Lord or that he came to earth to die for your sins, it's not too late for you to turn to him now. Now is the day of salvation. You can be ready and go with us in this event when you do believe that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. He is eternal. He was never created. He goes all the way back, eternity past. But God knew from the creation, that there had to be a way for him to save mankind. Because the Bible says he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. From the very first sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden, there had to be a blood atoning sacrifice for the remission of that sin. And it seems like man has always wanted to do works to overcome sin. Even Adam and Eve covered themselves with fig leaves, thinking that that would cover their sin. But God gave them animal skins. And in order for him to dress them in animal skins, that animal had to die and shed blood. And then with the law of Moses, an animal would be sacrificed shedding its blood for the remission of sin. But this needed to happen over and over again. Jesus came to fulfill this law once and for all when he shed his innocent blood, dying on the cross on Passover. He died that day, was buried and rose again three days later, just like the scriptures told us he would. And the Bible says that when we believe this, we are saved. And it's when we believe that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is our guarantee until the day of redemption, which is the rapture of the church. And we believe this day is coming very soon. And that's why today is the day of salvation. So I pray that you are believing this. I pray that you are like those children raising their hands and yet never saying later that they never believed, that you are raising your hand, believing from this day forward that Jesus is Lord. If this is you, then praise God. All of heaven is rejoicing. And we know that all of heaven is full of innocent children and babies and those who have faith like children. And I know that all of us represented by this channel family are rejoicing with you 
This is the day that the Lord has made and we will all rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm praying for you and anybody that might be watching this video right now that you continue to seek the Lord and you will find knock and the door will be open to you. I pray that the Lord meets you right where you need him today with that peace and comfort that really does surpass all understanding. And I want to thank you for joining me. I really do love and appreciate all of you more than you even know. And God willing, I will see you in the next video or I will see you in the air. So take care and God bless you.